It's your boy Drop here back another video and today uh, I got to you guys man today we're gonna be checking out Zenkai 7 Yeah me Goku now um why do I wanna check him out? Um I just wanted to check him out, bro. I always be seeing people rocking the Saiyans team and on um, fusions or Super Saiyans, and I always see them on the bench, bro. Like people just don't bring them back in PvP no more. And I was like, bro, Namagoku is a unit that I I enjoy using, bro. I just like the way his kit is and everything, his playstyle and stuff, bro. Sometimes you can play a little bit passive, and just the mind game that he has with the blue card, it makes people scared of trying to be aggressive against you because they don't want to get countered by the blue card. So most likely they're going to tackle you and you're going to be ready to tackle, counter them and stuff like that. So I wanted to reuse him. The blue sand. I know Ultra Gogeta is better. I know that there's other better blue sands, but I just want to revisit him, bro. Uh, he has some nice last stand capabilities where he can, you know, do some better damage. As long as he stays on the battlefield, he does extra damage. So we're going to be rocking him on this sand team with Bardock. I wanted to rock Bardock instead of Kyle and Goku because uh, Kyle and Goku will just take over the bat will take over the, the showcase. I want to rock Bardock and Namek. We have uh, the Ultra Goku because he's really good. G4 and then we have Goku Vegeta as our purple. Really solid Saiyan team. These are the clips that we're going to be rocking for all of our units. And then without further ado, let's dive on into some matches. So, first match facing up against a future team. It's like a future guy key team in a sense because he has Goku Vegeta as a leader. So, it's kind of a future god key team so i started with bardock the reason why i started with bardock because i want bardock to ramp up his damage because the longer he stays in battle the the more damage he gets so i switched the name of goku i did the drop combo because i had a feeling he was gonna go to future gohan right so i popped the blue card there do the extra damage doing a ton of damage already which is really really good so i'm just standing there just so i can transform into my uh transform state he plays aggressive I transform right here just to get the you know the stat increase because he's a transforming unit, which helps him a ton because he's a transforming unit. So that means he's gonna have high base stats, just like him and Piccolo. So that's one thing that benefits him a lot is that the fact that he is a transforming Zenkai, bro. Like only I think it's like him, Ella Piccolo, Purple Twenty One. There's not really that many transforming Zenkai units, bro. So him just having the base stats helps him a ton because. If you put the pure and stuff, like he's just gonna do a ton of damage. So he pops the blue card with Goku Vegeta. I go instantly with Bardock. One thing I love about Bardock is every time you tap him, bro, he's gonna lock you in for three timer counts. That's one thing that's super amazing about Bardock. So take advantage of it. I rising rush. I should have just swapped into somebody else to rush, but he goes to Rose and we're doing some good damage against Rose, but he does guess our rush, so you know that kind of sucks, bro. You never want to get your rush guess, so he lands the damage on Rose, so I just go to G4 right here because I thought he was going to rise and rush. I didn't want him to rush my, you know, damn it, Goku. I go to full range strike right there to see if I can change it up, but he does it. So I sidestep there and then I dash forward and then I sidestep and I pop the green card instantly because I had a feeling that he was going to pop his rush. I was able to pop my green card first, able to get priority. So we do negate his rush and he goes to Future Gohan. I pop the main ability with G4. Thinking that like, hey bro, you know, whoever I pop the old on is going to die. I think we did pop Future Gohan's first life already. So whoever takes this, him or Goku Vegeta is going to die from this. So uh, yeah, we killed them and we do nullify endurance anyway. So I go to Bardock, I sized up there, go to Namek Goku. He PVs me right there. I know he doesn't have his rush because he literally just botched his rush. So I'm staying there with Namek Goku. Namek Goku's defense is looking really good, bro. Look at the tank he's doing, bro. Like. The fact that we have Bardock and we have Raditz on the bench, he's getting like an extra 28% health. So that's really nice. One thing I really like about uh, Bardock as a leader, and when you use him, he does get the extra 10 health to Team Bardock, which he applies it to everybody else when he's leader. So we tap Rose there, last stand, I mean, last unit is, you know, Goku Vegeta. We go there, tap him. I over tap right there, so he does catch me slacking right there. And I believe. I go to G4 just so I can nullify the whole cut, right? Just the whole cut thing. So, no, not, the, not the cut, but the whole nullifying cover change thing, right? Like the cover change thing. So, I go to Bardock. I pop this old card right there, and then I pop the I pop the old card so I can get the LF, do the walk, but he forfeits, and we get the dub. So, Namagoku did his thing, bro. 
Like, I love his blast damage, bro. He does really good blast damage. You guys, not one thing about me is I love units. I love blast-based units more than strike-based units. I don't know why. I just feel like a lot of people focus on too much strike attack and defense, and, like, they really don't focus on their blast defense. So when there's a blast defense, when a blast-based unit comes around and do blast damage, their defense is absolutely terrible. So next match, we're facing up against... A Namek Goku user, which is pretty interesting. And then, uh, wait, that's Namek Goku? Yeah, Namek Goku as well with Goku Vegeta. So that's pretty interesting that he he's bringing Namek Goku, which is pretty dope as well. So he goes with the other world Goku. What he's trying to do, he wants you me to rush the other world Goku and then have Namek Goku and Goku Vegeta do insane damage. So he owes the Goku Vegeta pop the blue card, thinking that I was going to switch to G4 so he can get rid of my 80% cut, which he was absolutely wrong. So sidestep right here. I pop the main ability, not the main, yeah, the main ability to transform, and I believe I popped the green card, which I was trying to go to Bardock and pop the green, but it made me uh, pop the green with Nam and Goku. So I just sidestep, get my advantage back, he PVs me there. So I'm just waiting to see if he combo drops right here, right? Which he doesn't, so I was able to get the cover change there. And then I pop the blue card just to get rid of his advantage, right? And I do extra damage right there. I waited for him to sidestep again, pop another one because it's a fast animation. I sidestep and I go to Bardock and sidestep again and then I rush, but he goes to the Vegeta. He was able to go to the Vegeta in time, so that means he takes less damage against Yellow, which was a really, really good play by him. And we do not get guessed. We don't get guessed, but the question is, do we kill the Goku Vegeta? If we kill the Goku Vegeta, that's amazing, but if we don't, we barely kill him, so we have to land a combo on him to get him out, right? So he switched out, which is a smart play to do. I'm standing here still. He immediately pops the blast card, which I had a, I had my old card ready. I was ready to pop my old. He should have did attack instead of a blast card, but we do barely wipe out the other one Goku as well. But then he pops the old. I made the four range blast. Nami Goku with the counter blue card was able to kill the other world Goku quickly, right? But he does give death buffs like the healing and damage afflicted buffs. So he goes to his end that Goku. I pop the green card to get rid of his vanish. And he instantly rushes me. So, um, yeah, he does rush me, but right now I'm not really too worried about that because G4 is an absolute tank. He was not going to die from that. He had Vegeta and Nami Goku, both are weak to greens. So I wasn't really scared of even if the land, if the rush landed, G4 would have survived. So I popped the main blue there. I popped the strike card. And then I popped the oak card just to get someone help down super low as possible. And I was thinking that G4 can kill. This name and Goku, I think he, I think he, if he barely kills, if not, yeah, barely kills. So he barely kills, which, you know, I'm absolutely perfectly fine with that because we were able to kill Nam and Goku there. So now it's just a 3v1. I instantly go with the blast card and I finish it up with a strike card and we do get the dub there. So yeah, Nam and Goku, bro, I think he's still really solid. His Z ability is timeless. 35 if we're at 14 stars 35 to both defense I mean both attacks is super good for us a typical Saiyan team and then his Zenkai is is a blue Saiyan bro like he helps the second best unit in the game Ultra Gogeta so this is a really good bench right so now we're facing up against arguably people think that these are the top three units in the game I think G4 is fourth but either way these are the top three units Three of the top five units in the game, right? G4, Ultra Gogeta, Kaioken. So, you guys see me there. I do bring in Ultra Goku to counter the, uh, the what's named the Ultra Kaioken. And then I just bring in G4 to counter the what's named the Ultra Gogeta. And then I just have Namor Goku there. So, right now, I do tap him out just to get rid of his 80% cut. Because when I do land a combo G4, I don't want him to be tanking it like that, right? So, I'm doing the damage with... Namor Goku, I think I stay in with Namor Goku because it's going to make him stay in G4 and I could form up my Dragon Balls. So if I was able to switch with somebody else, he most likely was going to switch out. So that's why I stayed in with Namor Goku so I could form up those rush. I need two more Dragon Balls in order for me to rush somebody. So I really want to rush with G4 because G4 is neutral, if not type advantage against every unit on his team. So I'm just farming for my last two rush. I see one on my strike. And I'm going with the blast card there, caught him there. I go with the Namek Goku, but then he does lock my what's the name? He locks my uh, my strike card, so I can't use it. I pop the blue card there to get rid of his vanish. 
but he was able to stay patient, which was a really, you know, that was a really good play by a really good play. So I'll go to the Ultra Goku and see if he goes with a blast, but he doesn't. So I'm just waiting to go to G4 unless he pops his main ability. So I'm waiting to see if he pops his main ability, but he doesn't. So I'm able to universe cover change my first time with G4. I still have the 80% cut. He pops the blue card, was able to counter that there. So I go with the blast, size, I try to pop the main ability, see what he's doing. And I think I tap right there. I thought he was gonna size up and get rid of his vanish. So he attacks, I go with the strike. He was able to PV me there and he's in a combo right now. So I'm just eating the damage with G4. And then I believe I go to the red Goku just to tank the damage. And the red Goku's tanking really well against the Kaokun Goku. Like granted the Kaokun Goku, He's gonna do like 10 cards. So like the fact that he's eating all that damage up, every time he pops a green card, he's getting 30% damage inflicted. This Ultra Goku is eating really, really good. So I popped the green card there just to, so I can get my rush. And I believe once I land this, I just instantly pop the rush because if I go with a strike or a blast, he's gonna go to G4 with the universe cover chain. So I was like, you know what? Let me just rush right now. Hopefully I can kill G4 right now, which I'm gonna do. Don't get guessed. But now we're locked in. We're locked in for five time accounts with Ultra Gogeta. So what I do here is I pop my main ability to see what I'm doing. I think I do just to heal up as well. But he goes to the back, which is nice. And then I attack immediately just so, because I thought he was going to play aggressive as well. So I can just milk out the time that he has on the five time accounts. So I go to Nama Goku. I pop the green just to get rid of Ultra Goku and bring in Kyle Ken Goku. So now... He's stuck with the uh, Kyle King Goku for 10 time accounts, and hopefully by the time before Ultra Gogeta comes in, I can pop the old card with Ultra Goku, my red Ultra Goku, and kill him. So he goes there, I go with the blast, catch him slipping, I go with the strike card there. He locks me in once again. He has a blue card right here, so he destroys my two strike cards. So I'm kind of stuck in with G4, seeing what I can do. So I'm just chilling here. And I'm trying to hopefully that I'm trying to get a what's the name a blue a strike card so I could just blast through it. But we do we're able to dip out in time. He plays aggressive, instantly pop the blue card with every Goku to counter him, and we do instantly take out his uh, his Ultra Gogeta, which is pretty nice. It's satisfying just to land the old like the counter with uh, what's the name with uh, Namek Goku, and that's pretty satisfying, bro. You're doing that to the second best unit in the game. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. And we wasn't even with Nam and Goku for a long time. Because Nam and Goku gets extra damage afflicted the longer he stays in battle. That was just me just pop into him and just pop the blue card and he did that much damage. So that's pretty that's that's pretty dope. That's pretty good. That's really, really good. So finish the match, arguably against the three best units in the game. Three out of the top five best units in the game. That's really good. So next match. Next next match. I think we have two more matches. This match and then another match. So Facing up against, um, you know, Fusions. Fusions is one of the better teams in the in the meta, bro. I think it's probably second or third, right? So I'm starting off with Bardock because I want Bardock to, uh, I want Bardock's, you know, damage inflicted buffs and stuff to ramp up, right? So this team is really tanky too. He has a 14 star G4, um, so 14 star like Ultra Gogeta. So this is a really tanky Fusion team. So he pops the green card there, and I have to let Bardock eat the damage because. Uh, he just has, what's his name, he literally nullifies cover change, and I don't want Gogeta 4 to get rid of his 80% cut, so I go to Blast, I have a feeling that he's going to pop the Blast right there, I should have tapped, but I kind of paused, so he's able to land a combo here, and right now I'm thinking that this guy most likely has his rush right now, so pops the rush immediately, I was like, you know what, let me pop a blue, because he used every card besides the blue, he's, I seen him pop two greens and all that stuff, I was able to guess him right there, which, you know, helped me out a ton. So I transformed in there with Goku. I probably should have stayed with G4 because I didn't use his vanish, but I attack immediately. And then I attack here. Right now we are clashing in the middle. Hopefully I win this right here, which I do, which is really, really good. So uh, I can easily just go up, pop the blast card, and then go to Bardock and Rising Rush him because uh, he already swapped out with Ultra Gogeta. He already swapped out of Ooh, so there's no way he can bring those two guys in. So hopefully, he doesn't guess my rush, and we can kill this G4, and then we can change the whole game around. So, we don't get guessed, but the question is, do we kill G4? Yes, we do. So, really good spot, because now we're 3v2 situation. We have a unit that counters his best unit in the game, uh, or the best unit on his team, which is Ultra 
which is Ultra Gogeta. We have Super Saiyan 4. So now I'm just staying there with Bardock. I'm doing as much damage to him as possible before he goes back to Oob. I want to land those extra strike cards. Then I pop the Oak card. But I should have just popped the Oak card instantly. You know, um, he was able to go to Maju. He was able to take the damage. So Oob takes the damage, which I'm honestly not mad about because I would like to just get Oob first uh first life out of there so he goes immediately right he goes with a full range strike so he attacks and I'm, right now i'm trying to go to g4 so i can just stop the the combo going i can instantly pop a blue card because he can't do much because he just can't so i go to blast card get advantage out the way i pop the main i see him about to pop a green card again so i tap him out and then i believe i instantly pop the oak card because i didn't think he was gonna go to g4 i'm the ultra gogeta but he attacks immediately he was able to land the oak card right there with g4 he was able to take out Ultra Gogeta to down to a sliver of HP. So he pops the main ability. I'm chilling here for a little bit. I tap right there. And then I was able to dodge right there. And then I go to Nam Goku because Nam Goku does get key every time he comes in. And I instantly pop the blast and strike to kill Ultra Gogeta. And now we literally have one unit. So I popped the blue card there because I thought he was going to attack immediately. So I was trying to get the LF off. But he played it, you know, he played it pretty solid. So he gets the paralysis. And I'm just trying to finish it off with Nam Goku. Right, I attacked there. We was able to kill uh, this team, and that's because I guess his rush, bro. If he didn't, if he didn't get his rush, guess this match is totally different. There's a different outcome to it, but that's just how the game is, bro. You can just get lucky, you just guess someone's rush, and then you can just turn the tide around like that, which is pretty insane. So last match, facing against USS. So he brings Bergamo. He brings the new Frieza. And he brings Jiren, which is really interesting. So I go to Namagoku, go to Strike. And right now, he literally counters every unit on my team. So I drop combo right there. I'm chilling in with the, what's the name, with Namagoku. Because there's really no point in going to G4. So I do get the combo going. I go to G4 there. And then I instantly go out to Bardock, right? I tackle him there. And I wait for him to do a long range Blast card so I can instantly pop a blue card and do a ton of damage to Jiren, which I see him sized up there. Almost one shot some bro. And right now, every time he taps me, I'm locking him in. So I go here, I sized up, but he was able to go to Bergamo really quick. I was really surprised that he was able to switch to Bergamo that quick because he tapped me three times. So I thought he was gonna be locked in a little bit longer, but we do get the good damage against Bergamo, but Bergamo heals because I believe at a certain time account he heals up. So all that damage was basically for nothing. So I pop the green card. He goes to the Frieza and he does get his damage. So I just go to the Bardock combo drops, which is a really good play. And then I just go to G4. And I believe I pop the blue card right here. I'm waiting for him to side steps. So I can pop the blue card, but he side steps. And then I pop the main ability so I can just nullify the tight disadvantage so Jiren's oak card doesn't like literally one shot G4 so I can mitigate as much damage as possible which I do there and then I go to blast card he's able to pop the green card with Bagamo and I pop another blast so I'm just trying to see if I can land my oak card with G4 so I attack there then I sidestep and I go to Bardock right there just to get the combo going and I believe I popped the rust because I was thinking that Jiren was not back in time, but he was. So right now I'm just like, all right, bro, you know, Jiren, he's going to get his endurance. When I rush, I don't have no one. I just nullify the endurance like DKP or full power Frieza. So we don't get guessed, but Jiren does get his second life, which is pretty annoying, right? So yeah, I'm um, chilling here. I popped the main with Bardock to see if he plays aggressive. He doesn't have his oak card, right? So now I pop the green card here. The person that I want to get rid of now, if he does rush, is G4. Because G4 already popped his oak card and all that stuff. So he really doesn't have no value left for me. And I want to have Bardock's Endurance when he loses a member. And I want to have Namor Goku because that's, you know, it's his showcase. So he goes with a blast there. And I'm just not trying to get PV. I pop the blast and he just full range rise rush me like what I do to people, right? But he goes with Bergamo. And Bagamo just doing absolutely no deep, like no damage, like barely tickling Namek Goku. And I guess I'm there as well. So I feel like even if it went through, I don't think it would have killed. I really don't think it was going to kill. So he pops a green card with Frieza. I know he has a blue card right after he pops his first green card. Go to G4 to take the damage. And it barely kills. It barely kills, right? So I, I sidestepped there. He was able to tap me. I should have just popped the blue card. 
because I knew he was gonna play aggressive right there, I sidestep, and he does get locked in with Bardock. So I tackle him there, and I play aggressive, he taps me once again, I pop the green card, and right now I'm like, all right, let's pop the blue card, do as much damage as possible, because we have a full hand, and it barely kills the Frieza, but he sidesteps once again, I sidestep there, and then he is just doing the damage with Bogamo, right? So I gotta eat this damage with Bardock for a little bit because I can heal with the green card. He has the oak card right there, so when he pops it, I go to Namor Goku, type disadvantage, so I can take less damage from the oak card. He does do more oak damage, depending on how much and how much uh, available allies he has, Bogamo. So I go with the strike card instantly. Don't know why I did that, bro, because Jiren literally has a strike cover change. I really don't understand why I did that play. So now he's just kind of playing a little bit passive. So I go with the blast card there because I realize his his uh, his reaction time is really slow. So I really feel like he doesn't really take advantage of the blast armor in time. So I pop the green card there just to get rid of Bergamo, bro, so I can deal with Jiren. And then I can finish up this match. So I go to Bardock just to type advantage. And he attacks immediately, which kind of, you know, catches me off guard, right? So... He's doing his damage with Jiren, but he's just not going to kill Bardock at all because he already popped his ult, he already popped his, and you know, that's the only thing that can nullify endurance. And you know, I tackle him there, and then I attack immediately, he's able to take Jiren out, and then I just go to Namek Goku right here after this strike card, and we get the LF off. So Namek Goku is still a fun unit, bro. He definitely has age. But his uh, transforming stats definitely helps him compete in this meta. And he has a really fun, interesting play style where you kind of have that mind game advantage against people because they they don't want to play aggressive against someone that has a counter blue card and he can buy you time for sub count. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and we're growing, man. And I'm out. Peace.